December the 16th, 2023. As you're looking at one of the models that we watched during the hurricane season, this is the Nav Jim or the Navy model. And uh, there's a low pressure system forming in the Gulf as we speak. We're going to look at satellite images. But notice as it comes across Florida, it's going to increase. It gets blue and purple as we go through there. So, Florida, you're going to get hit pretty hard. The lightning strike models are very strong. But when it gets that dark blue and it's going up the East Coast, guys, there's going to be uh, very high winds, probably a lot of power outages, probably some flooding coming in because it's rotating just like a hurricane or a tropical system, and that's going to push um, wind ashore and uh, waves into the harbor. December the 16th, 2023. Guys, it is overcast here. It's in the 50s, and uh, I think that's about as high as it's going to get for the next few days. We're right before getting hit by a line of uh, heavy rain. But notice off in the Gulf of Mexico, there's a green circle. I know we're 16 days past the end of uh, hurricane season, and this is not expected to come anywhere near a hurricane in the Gulf. But it's going to be forming. We're going to look at satellite images, and it's going to bring some havoc into Florida. Then it's going to increase in, uh, intensity and move up the East Coast. We'll play this thing forward starting right here. Satellite images are very uh, interesting also. Now, you're going to notice uh, colder air moving in in these uh, high-pressure areas here as it, this storm moves up the East Coast. So cool air is going to settle in here into the southeast after this rain gets through here today, guys. Let's play this and just step it kind of slowly through. System forming there. Notice it's going to get darker blue into purples going up the east coast right there. Again, winter storm, but it has uh, the counterclockwise rotation, which is going to throw a lot of wind into that top uh, quadrant of the storm. What else is it going to do? It's going to throw a lot of waves into the harbors and bays, depending on your tide at that time. So be, just be aware of that. But it's going to be a lot of cool weather coming in behind it, like I said. And there's a secondary storm that some of the modelers are watching that's going to form out in the Atlantic, come near the East Coast, and then possibly uh, impact Maine. And this is the colder air settling in here after that happens. Now, these are current satellite images. It's 9.34 a.m. Central Time this morning. Uh, we're not far from the possible impact of that 2.8 X flare. We'll, all you have to do is go to Space Weather on our website at bpearthwatch.com. It's one of the links. Click there, top left. It's going to give you the solar wind speed, and that's going to give you the indications that this thing is uh, getting very close. But here, we're dealing with this low pressure system here spinning a lot of moisture, pulling it up out of the Gulf into much colder air. You can tell that by what's going on in the edges here. Now, here's the system they're watching down in the Gulf of Mexico itself. It's, it is expected to move across Florida in this area, then back up into the U.S. We're going to look at the charts. Let's look at a couple of other satellite images. Now, taking a look at this image, it gives you an idea of where the moisture is in some of your uh, thunderstorms. That river of moisture is still coming into our northwest. Check this out. You guys are getting a lot of it here. And uh, coming down into Nevada, you folks in Southern California, possibly Arizona, looks like you may get some uh, moisture. I'm not sure how dry you are right now, but rain is always a good thing compared to drought. Now, in the Gulf of Mexico, here's the system forming. And uh, again, it's going to move across Florida. But let me say this about this: the difference between this uh, train of storms here, they're light now, is because it's 53 degrees outside now at 9:37 a.m. Central Time. It, remember, last weekend it was very warm out in front of this, so that's helping. Now I can't say that about uh, the temperatures uh, south of here, and that's why I think there's going to be problems in Florida itself. Because it's warmer there, you've got a lot of moisture being pulled in, you've got cold air pushing in from the uh, north. This is another model called Windy.com. It's also on BPEarthWatch.com. If you scroll down to the left, you'll see it says Windy. And I've got it set at the present time. We're going to play it forward. 
you can see this set of storms here and this is the ones that we are dealing with now but they're much closer than this this is earlier this morning i'm going to play it forward but you'll notice your lightning strikes and stuff start to increase as we get uh, closer to florida we pull it up right here just take a look at this so you know what you're dealing with it's not just going to be rain it doesn't look like going into set we're still in saturday here notice your timestamp bottom left lightning starts to pick up you can see the yellow strikes also in new orleans area southern louisiana right in there guys check that out now that's still today that's how fast this thing is moving sunday now and we're going over jacksonville back out into the atlantic you're going to have these areas notice that the winds are starting to pick up the bands of pressure are getting closer and closer together like this out some setting over atlantic city or it's coming over new york lightning strikes still involved and with look at this guys the closer these lines are together that's how fast the wind is picking up look at that so it's going to move up and back out into the north atlantic now this is 7 p.m this afternoon you've got storms setting up off new orleans and here i just want to go through the timing of it here's the center of low pressure step it forward there's 8 p.m 9 p.m you're starting to come shore right here from cape coral up to, uh, to tampa area let it play forward so just so you guys know about your timing of this that's important coming across daytona beach 6 a.m in the morning it's offshore of georgia right there that's how fast it's going to move through here overnight and you saw in the other model the amount of lightning and all but that seems to be the strongest storms in the morning 6 a.m and uh again south of savannah i guess this would be down close to charleston it doesn't show in this map let me pull it up a little bit there's brunswick right in there that's going to be your strongest sail so be aware of that in the morning as you're waking up this is going to be wrapping up coming off the coast of florida getting ready to move up the east coast remember it's strengthening the entire time now while we're here it's 9 49 a.m it is 10 49 a.m on the east coast and what we're looking at is three days of solar wind speed we saw this activity in here and this is a section where we saw the blackout in new york then the second one came in and it increased it up we were dealing with uh, in this area over 500 kilometers per second solar wind speed plasma density at 22.26 now let me back up over here solar wind speed is pretty much at average going back three days around the 323 30 average and it starts to kick up plasma density look at this right here guys w about 1.48 and that's centimeters cubed that's how dense the uh proton energy is inside this cloud called the cme but 172 starts going up and then yesterday look at that we're in the 30s and 40s and this one's predicted possibly to get into the 60s so it's going to be i think a strong impact now let's look at what we're, where we're at right now at the current time we are at right there 465 kilometers per second uh again cl uh, very close to a million miles per hour maybe a little over the proton density is 13.8 remember it was hitting uh, close to 40 but this is going to jump so if you go to spaceweather.com and let me back up and i'll show you exactly where the link is when you start to see this spike that would be the timing of the event approaching us remember this is being picked up by satellites orbiting our planet and so they get a, a little bit of heads up not very much but just a hair you'll see this jump just before the earth feels the impact now come over to spaceweather.com you can go directly there or you can come to our website it's always linked there current solar wind speed 459 kilometers per second density 14.02 now i use the discover satellite information right there so when you click on it you're going to go to where we were just at so you click there and you can watch those charts pretty much coming in in real time maybe there's not much delay at all of course the information has to come from the satellites and download to whatever center is reading those but uh, that's uh, what we're watching for right now it's going to be interesting and guys if you scroll down i mentioned this in the video last night just keep coming through some of this information here and this is, starts to get into your 
the effects of cosmic radiation on people. This is uh, showing some of the information about airline pilots and then even down to the surface level. This chart right here is interesting to me because as the solar cycle picks up, gamma radiation, stratospheric radiation decreases because the solar wind is not letting it impact our planet as much. It's blowing it past. So since solar cycle 25 has begun, we're starting to see a decrease because this was rising very quickly in the and for as far as this stratospheric radiation and this is the exact information that i linked in the comments after the video last night what i wanted to show you here is that it's talking about cosmic rays and how they affect us it can give you uh heart problems the whole thing dizziness but right here in number one two three and four are four different studies talking about different factors of it it's very interesting but these are the links scroll down and you'll see it just under that chart we were looking at. And that will give you that information. As we're watching it, you watch it. It's a heads up. Be safe.